Hey everyone, and welcome to a very special guide. There's no doubt that World of Warcraft PvP is incredibly unique, and while it offers plenty of casual formats, it's rated arena that sees the most competition. Unfortunately, some players struggle a little more than others to get the most out of themselves, which results in them being stuck in duelist, rival, or even challenger ratings. Well, don't fret, as today we're bringing you the ultimate guide to escaping low CR, specifically our top 7 ways in which you can start to improve as a player and break through those barriers that are holding you back. Without further ado, let's get right into it. The most fundamental part of WoW Arena is picking a class that you actually enjoy playing. This might seem obvious, but choosing a class that you have fun playing will improve every other part of your arena experience. There's nothing worse than struggling to gain rating on a class that you don't enjoy. If playing the class feels like a chore, and if you don't even have fun while winning, maybe it's best to try another class or spec. The class and spec you choose should reflect both your playstyle and your personality. Are you the type of player who likes to control the enemy team and play defensive? Warlock might be the class for you. Warlocks and mages have spammable CC with fear and polymorph that allows them to slow down the pace of the game by shutting down kill attempts. Do you like playing aggressive, charging into the enemy team and doing as much damage as possible? Then warrior might be your class. Class identity matters. If you have lots of fun playing a spec, you will be more motivated to improve. And always try to have fun. It feels better to achieve your arena goals if you are able to have fun while doing it. Playing your character might be hard at times, but it should never feel like a chore. Once you have found a class that you can identify with, focus on mastering its fundamentals. This starts with understanding your class and spec and learning everything there is to know about your character. Make sure you are reading every spell, talent, and soulbind. There are many different ways your spells, talents, and soulbinds interact with each other. There are so many spell modifiers and micro interactions between abilities. For resto druids, the amount of healing done by your nature swiftness regrowth depends on how many hot a target has, whether or not Soul of the Forest is active, and if it's used with Nature Swiftness. Resto Druid Mastery, Soul of the Forest, and Nature Swiftness all modify the amount of healing this single spell will do. If you didn't know these interactions, you could be missing out on a lot of healing. Obviously, this example is just for Resto Druids, but this should illustrate how deep the interactions between abilities can be for every class. Learning how all of your spells and talents interact allows you to maximize the efficiency of your spells. Once you have mastered your character, try to learn as much as you can about other classes and specs. It might seem daunting, but the more you learn about other classes, the better equipped you will be when fighting them in arena. You don't have to treat Wowhead like an encyclopedia, studying every spec for hours, but you should make some effort in understanding the core abilities of other classes. The first thing you should learn are the cooldowns of each spec. Not only should you read exactly what these cooldowns do, but you should pay close attention to their spell icon and any animations that they create. Offensive cooldowns are especially important to recognize visually and audibly. A spell like Combustion for Fire Mages has a distinct icon, spell animation, and sound that you need to be able to recognize. If you don't know what an offensive cooldown does or what it looks like, you may find yourself reacting too late. Finally, make sure you make the most out of your UI and macros. This can be an overlooked part of gameplay, but it's really important. Imagine being frustrated that your feet are too close to the steering wheel of your car, and then imagine someone showing you that you can simply back your seat up so your legs sit better. This may seem like a silly example, but playing with a bad UI is like being uncomfortable in your own car. Your UI should always make the game easier to play. Generally speaking, minimalist and information-dense UIs are really good for PvP. You don't want to have a plain UI with absolutely no information. You need to be able to track things like interrupts, enemy cooldown usage, and enemy buffs. Your add-ons should help you see things going on in Arena, and they should communicate vital information to you and your team. They should not create a cluttered environment that makes the game harder to play. After you've mastered the fundamentals of your class, it's time to choose a comp to play in Arena. Your success in Arena depends not only on your skill as a player, but also on the two other players you will be queuing with in 3v3. It is highly recommended that you try to choose the best possible comp for your class in Arena. You should stay up to date on arena tier lists, seeing which comps work well with your spec. Always try to play the best comps for your spec, and if possible, try to pick a meta comp that suits your playstyle. If possible, try to stick with one or two core comps the entire season. Remember that each comp requires a unique skill set and a unique set of strategies. Arena is all about repetition and muscle memory. The more you play a single comp, the more you learn its nuances. The more experience you have with your comp will make you better suited for recognizing patterns in arena games, such as knowing when you can or cannot trinket, which targets are best, when to use cooldowns, and so on. 
arena comps tend to fall somewhere on a spectrum of aggression and control. Whether you like fast paced arena games or slow methodical control based setups, try to pick a meta comp that is not only strong but also fun for you to play. Picking a strong comp is important because it will give you a better perspective on the game and will give you a higher chance at gaining rating. Competing against other meta dominant comps allows you to engage with core competitive gameplay. It can be fun to play a non meta comp, just know that it might hinder your progress as a player. There is nothing more frustrating than losing arena matches because your comp is weak. And if you want further proof, just look at the teams that compete in the Arena World Championship. In almost every tournament arena game, they are playing strong meta comps. If you find a comp that performs well in the meta and suits your playstyle, try to find partners with the same goal as you. Always seek out other players who are willing to grow and learn with you as a player. Building team synergy will be incredibly important for your long term success. Part of this synergy includes having effective communication and knowing how your partners react in specific situations. We all have our strengths and weaknesses as players, but it can take a long time to recognize the specific strengths and weaknesses of your partners. You might find that your healer tends to panic when getting trained. This doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad player, but rather that you might have to learn how to cover this weakness. The more you play with your partners, the better you will become at covering their weak spots. At the same time, they will be learning how to play with you. Everyone on your team benefits benefits with synergy. It may seem obvious, but remember that WoW Arena is a team game, and a team functions best when everyone is directed towards the same goal. It might be fun to have a queue session with someone much higher rating than you, or to queue with friends at low CR. But if your goal is to improve as a player, you should think about long term commitments. A queue session only lasts for a day, but an arena season lasts for months. Jumping from team to team can dramatically change your arena rating, so it makes your progress as a player much harder to track. Having a stable arena team with the same set of goals will help you build team synergy and will give you a clearer view of your own progress as a player. If you manage to find two other players who are willing to follow you on your journey to Gladiator and beyond, your next goal should be learning how to effectively communicate in arena. Communication is one of the most important parts of gameplay, and it's probably one of the most difficult things to get right. There's this important balance balance you need to remember when communicating. You don't want to say nothing during an arena game, and on the other end of the spectrum, you shouldn't be talking over your partners the entire game. Not only is it just rude to talk over your friends, but it might drown out the information that they're trying to communicate. They might be out of mana or out of cooldowns in a crucial moment, and you might not be aware of this due to poor communication. Remember that communication helps fill gaps of information for your teammates and allows you to coordinate offensive pushes and defensive plays with your partners. Comps like Rogue Mage often coordinate incredibly precise offensive pushes and this requires all players line up their global usage within a few seconds. In order to do this, both the Rogue and the Mage have to talk out exactly when a CC will land or when a stun will be used. To get better at communicating, practice calling out as much relevant information as possible during a game. This includes things like targeting, cooldown usage, crowd control, positioning, and resource management. You don't have to announce every single global you press, but prioritize communicating what is most important. If you've learned to effectively communicate, it's time to think about your mindset in Arena. Remember that mistakes happen and losing is inevitable. A friend once told me a super valuable lesson, you either win or you learn. You cannot avoid losing or making mistakes, but you can learn how to deal with them. After arena games, think about what went wrong during the game and discuss it with your partners. Maybe you died because you didn't use a defensive cooldown in time, or maybe your healer didn't manage mana properly until it was too late. Take the time to talk about the specific details of an arena match. You should think about your mistakes and try to find active solutions to employ next time you're in a similar situation. Think about every single way you could have reacted and ask if there was a more optimal line of play. For instance, you might have a strong defensive cooldown and weak defensive cooldown. If you died while pressing your weak defensive cooldown only, it indicates that your stronger cooldown or even both cooldowns were necessary. While you're doing this, try to bring out the best in your teammates. The worst thing you can do is rage at your arena partner. Getting angry and yelling can really hurt a queue session because it makes the playing environment worse for everybody. Being aggressively confrontational makes people less likely to want to play with you. Focus on positive reinforcement. If your partner does something cool or skilled in arena, recognize it. People are more likely to repeat behavior when they feel rewarded for it. And remember, don't hate the player or hate the game. You cannot change class balance. You cannot nerf your opponents and buff yourself. Focus on the things you can control. Once you have your goal set, it's time to study. Use the videos on 
and skill cap or Twitch streams to their maximum potential. Be an active viewer by studying the gameplay of the best of the best. Pay attention to their movement, their rotation, their cooldown usage, and their communication. You might notice that a pro player is able to do a ton of damage. Try to figure out why. See exactly what globals they're pressing, when they're popping cooldowns, when they push, and when they run away. Use this information to incorporate their gameplay into your own. If possible, try to record your own gameplay. This will give you a record of every Q session and will allow you to analyze your losses. Rewatching your losses might seem painful, but remember, you either win or you learn. The games you lose often have the most important information, your mistakes. Rewatching your losses allows you to follow your own breadcrumbs, seeing exactly what went wrong. Nobody has a perfect memory of every moment of an arena game, so it can be hard to remember what you did wrong without recorded gameplay. And of course, make sure to also study your wins. Find points during arena games where things went well and try to replicate them. Finally, practice your gameplay in multiple environments. Arena might be the premier competitive setting, but test your skills in other environments. Learn to adapt in as many situations as possible. This will allow you to become a well-rounded player. PvE is an overlooked mode of practice. Use mythic dungeons and raids as a way to perfect your damage rotation and maximize your throughput. Alright guys, that concludes this guide on how you can start to escape low CR. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see more content like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.